Hello and welcome to another ACY Securities Market Review. My name is Alastair Schultz and I'm going to be your host through today's trading journey. Now in the week that we've just had go past, there has been a lot of news going on. Naturally there have been impacts from coronavirus, but we've also seen 10 year treasury yields fall below 0.5% for the first time, 30 year treasury yields breaking the 1.3% barrier for the first time, crude oil fall more than 30% and at one point even stretch through the distance of what it was during the Gulf War in 1991. We've seen futures on the S&P 500 and the index drop by 5% triggering trade limit downs, which is a rule that has been put in place since 1987. We've also seen Australian and New Zealand 10-year government bonds drop in yields with fresh record lows never before seen. We've then also seen Australia's benchmark stock index, the ASX 200, plunge down to lows not seen since 2008 and the yen has stored to its highest point since 2016. In addition to all of that, we've also had the Fed cut a 0.50 interest rate. We've had the Australians book down 0.25% on their interest rate. The Canadians cut by 0.50%. And on top of all of that, again, we've had positive numbers for non-farm payroll. So it has been a very busy week indeed. So I'm just gonna move on to the charts for us today to have a look at what some of those impacts have been and how they have applied to price. So the next steps that we have is actually a little bit of an update for you on the coronavirus itself. I don't wanna cover it on its own. I'd rather look at the other news that has been impacting in price, but you need to be aware of what is going on with that because it is affecting price in general. So the update that we have, 108,000 people have so far been infected according to numbers this morning. We've also seen more than 3,700 deaths globally. Now in Saudi Arabia, they have closed schools. Italy has restricted domestic travel. So people within certain towns are confined to the town that they live in. And in instances where they have coronavirus, they are not allowed to leave their house. Africa has had its first death for, with it being in Egypt. So that is now, it, coronavirus has now spread to every continent bar Antarctica on the planet. And we've seen diseases in 100 countries with COVID-19. So. Other than that, we've also had the US move from a containment method because they're fearing the possibility of them being able to actually contain the virus. Instead, they're moving more to a damage control route as according to the CDC this morning. Now on the charts, we have gold first. And I wanna point out every time I see a chart pattern, I will point it out in the chart just like this. So on gold, we had a double bottom occur. Now, prices continue to go up. We are seeing investors still running towards the haven side of gold and it has broken its highs of last week. So I do expect, depending on what the news is like this week, but so far indications are that the news is not gonna be great. So expect to see gold possibly go up for higher and bear in mind that if you see patterns like this, it's probably a good opportunity for you to place a trade on. Now, oil. Oil has had the best lows it's seen for quite some time, a 30% drop in some places. WTI oil has not had much different and you can see how low it's gone. I have a monthly chart of West Texas at the moment, and it has reached this low point here, which it has only reached two other times in the past th sort of 30 years. Now, I would not be at all surprised if we see it go lower, JP Morgan and a few other big e banking sort of subsidiaries are thinking about the $20 mark for price to continue going down. So perhaps keep an eye on what's going on there. This could be a very good buy opportunity for when price finally goes back up. Now, why has oil actually devalued? Well, the OPEC agreement and the people that are, the countries and nations that are involved in that have had a little bit of a disagreement. Saudi Arabia has decided to cut prices and increase the output of oil to be past a million, dollar, million barrels of oil a day. So that's naturally gonna increase the amount of supply and make it cheaper as well, which is kind of forcing an oil war between Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the remaining OPEC nations. Now, one thing that is key to be something to be considering is what it actually costs to make a single barrel of oil. America and the fracking side of things, it costs approximately $40 a barrel to make. Whereas if you're in Saudi Arabia, you can afford to go much, much lower. So keep an eye on that sort of thing because it will affect on where oil producers start to make profit and where oil, oil mills may end up draining in their value and running out of cash very quickly because they can't keep up with the ability to change prices for themselves. Now, 
The next chart to look at is the S&P 500. Now, whilst we had a increase in value uh, on, on the increase in the numbers that we had on non-farm payroll on Friday, it was pretty short lived. So in the video that I did on Friday, I did anticipate that we could potentially have high numbers. I gave you three different scenarios of above expectation, below expectation or on point. And it did go up and above, well and truly above. But the fact was short lived. We've now seen a number of markets move down further. And this is because we're getting overarching damage from the coronavirus and other impacts of news across the broad. And we're just seeing stuff like NFP that would usually move markets be a little bit muted in the impact that it has. So again, on S&P 500, again, one of these patterns is showing up. So we can see here we've got a double top. And this time it's more of a indicator that price is going to be continuing. Now it has had a rally up and that fits in with our criteria and then price has fallen down as well and it has matched distance. So if you've seen some of my other tutorials, I talk about this being a neckline, this being where your stop loss would be and then you measuring the distance between stop loss and your entry point or your neckline and then that would be the distance that you would mimic, mimic to put down as you take profit and or trail price behind it. Now, the next chart is of the dollar yen, but this chart here today, I'm just going to be going through what the major moving news was for the week other than coronavirus. So in this instance, we have had Chinese factory activities drop as the first point on the board. US PMI figures came out and we didn't see a great movement around that, but we did get a little rise. From there, we've moved on to the Fed cut. And from the Fed cut, we got a bit of stagnation in price. All through Wednesday, we didn't see too much action. It was a little bit sideways. And then we've had it come back down and resume into a downtrend. The OPEC output ideas and sort of about a meeting was occurring on Thursday, but we did not see the removal of Saudi Arabia and the idea of them dropping their numbers and increasing output until over the weekend. So we've seen a little bit more impact this morning from that than what actually happened at the OPEC meeting itself. Now, we've also had federal uh, Fed members speaking and we've also had EU and US trade negotiations occurring. So we have seen a little bit of news out of that. They're hopeful that there's going to be more stuff to come in terms of trade and it's going to be positive for the EU and for the US. Now, in addition to that, the final one that we sort of really saw was NFP. And again, you can see how contracted price really is at this point in time. Now then, the Saudi, Russia oil output production changes and the uncomfortabilities that are going on at OPEC have occurred right at the beginning or the over the weekend after price close. And so we've seen immediately upon market open, price drop down. So the next things for you to consider that happened over the weekend is that the Canada and the US have entered into daylight savings and the time shift has occurred. So be wary, the time that you're going to be trading for the New York session is going to change. So have a look at where it is depending on your current location and get, make sure that you're going to be starting to sit down at the right time to be trading. All right, so for the week ahead, there's a little bit of news to have a look at. There's not too much that's going to be a high impact event that we can see that's been scheduled. However, you do want to have and keep an eye on a few close things. So on Tuesday, we have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's governor speaking, likely to address monetary policy. It'll be interesting to see if they follow suit with Australia and organize a rate cut as well. On Wednesday, we have UK GDP occurring. So keep an eye on that. It'll be interesting to see what their output has been like and what the forecast is for next time as well. In addition to this, on Thursday, we have two sets of news releases to occur. US CPI will be coming out, both the core releases and the normal. Uh, expect them to remain subdued is what I believe. So have a look, keep an eye on those. It's likely to see a little bit of movement, especially for trading any US dollar pairs. In addition to all of this, Thursday, we also have an ECB announcement. So the European Central Bank is going to be doing some monetary policy statements and there is possibly going to be a rate cut. So keep an eye on what's going on there. I imagine that considering the rest of the world is starting to look at doing rate cuts, it is likely that it could occur for the ECB as well. So keep an eye on all that. Now, if you have any questions about the news or the stuff that I've discussed today or even before, feel free to send me an email at talk to al at acy.com. And of course, like and subscribe to the video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a good trading week ahead.